Hey guys, it's Davin here from Brewbits.com. Behind the camera as usual, we've got James. Say hello, James. This morning, I was told in no uncertain terms that I had to empty the freezer of all the fruit. So I did, and I've let it defrost, and I've got grapes, I've got blackberries, I've got um, black currants, and I've got red currants as well, there's gooseberries, and there were a few other things in there, but nothing that we can brew with. Um, so I thought I would then get brewing, and I'll show you some quick methods to brew up wine pretty quickly. So what are we gonna need for our brewing here? Well, we're gonna need some uh, black currants. You need about three pounds, that's 1.36 kilos. We're gonna need a couple of buckets. So I've already got my blackberry, uh, my black currants in a bucket already, so, but we need another one. We're gonna need some sugar. We're gonna need some finings, and here I'm using Clearit. You're gonna need some pectinase and some fermentation stopper and Camden tablets. You're gonna need some yeast, and here I'm using a Mangrove Jack's R56 red wine yeast. Should hopefully give us a, a good, full, rich bodied wine. Spoon. I'm using a mashing and sparging bag here, which we'll be using for straining the fruit out a little bit later. And I've also got a trial jar, and in there I've got a hydrometer and a thermometer. Right, so when I emptied my freezer, I actually ended up with 4.5 kilos, sorry, four, just over four kilos of black currants. And so for that, I'm gonna to need to add to this three, just over 3.3 kilos of sugar and about 10 liters of water. Now, if you're doing this at home, in the instruction or in all of the notes and all of the bumps down below the video, you'll get everything you need to know for what you need to do for a six bottle, that's a 4.5 liter batch. So the basics are you'll need three pound of fruit, two and a half pound of sugar, to six pints of water. If you wanna do that in metric, that is 1.36 kilos of fruit, 1.13 kilos of sugar, and 3.4 liters of water. Right, now we've got all that going. Should we get brewing? So my black currants have pretty much defrosted. Okay, there's a bit, little bit of crunchiness going on still in there, but that's all right. So I'm gonna add my sugar. And I've got quite a lot of sugar here because I've got quite a lot of black currants. Of course, if you're doing the one gallon batch, then just use uh, all of the bits and bobs for down below. So now I'm gonna add my boiling water. I'm gonna start off with two liters of boiling water in this one, but of course, if you're only doing the gallon batch, you're just gonna use two pints. In that goes, we can start to give it a little stir. And we need to keep stirring now until all the sugar is beautifully dissolved. So after all the sugar dissolved, I then topped it up with the cold water and it's coming out at pretty much exactly 20 degrees C. I've taken a sample in our trial jar with our hydrometer and it's coming out pretty high at 1.12, I would say. Now that's pretty high. And the reason why that's pretty high is because we've kind of got a little bit of a false reading. We, we've skimped on the water. And the reason why we skimped on the water it's because in here we've got all these lovely berries. And if you squeeze one of these berries, whoop, all this lovely juice is gonna come out. And that's our missing juice. That's what's gonna make it up to uh, pints and pints extra. So this at the moment, a little bit of a, a false reading coming out because as soon as all the lovely juices come out of the black currants, that's gonna kind of dilute the sugars that are in here as well. However, because we know how much sugar we've added to it, and on average how much sugar a black currant has, at the end, we'll be able to work out the true ABV. So, because we used um, some boiling water on this, 
our black currants could well have released some pectin. And pectin, great if you're making jam, pretty poo if you're making wine, because it may cause um, a uh, haze in the finished wine. If I knew I'd have two teaspoons left in there. So, to get rid of that haze or to get rid of that pectin, we're going to use something called pectolase. And this is also called peptic enzyme. Back to me a sec, James. So I'm just going to dissolve it here in this bit of uh, juice that I've taken from the bucket. And the way this is going to work is it's going to break down the cell walls um, of the pectin. Therefore, break it open and destroy it so it can cause the haze. But what pectin also beautifully does is works really, really, really well on the fruit in here as well, because it's also going to break down, ooh, let's get over that leaf, it's going to break down the cell walls. And as it breaks down those cell walls, it's going to cause the currents to release their colour. It's always going to cause the currents to release all that lovely juice that's locked up in them at the moment. Cool, right, so now we've got our pectolase in and our peptic enzyme. And we've got the right temperature. We can now add our yeast. And here I'm using a Mangrove Jacks R56 um, red wine yeast. And this is gonna help keep all the lovely depth of body, the color, and help all that lovely fruitiness that's in those currants really shine out in the finished wine. And what I'm gonna do is just stir that in because we're using this yeast as well, we don't need to use any nutrient because that's already within it. And we're there. So all I'm gonna now do is pop my lid on loosely. And this now goes into my warm cupboard at 18 to 22 degrees C to ferment to for the next seven to 10 days. The black currant wine has been sat in my warm cupboard for the last 10 days. Come on in and have a look at this, James, because all of the um, black currants have started to float to the top and you can see there is the wine and, oh, that smells great. Okay, so down here, I have got a sterilized bucket and I've also got a mashing and sparging bag. The reason why I'm using a mashing and sparging bag is because it's a little bit bigger it allows me to tie it over the end, as long as you don't lose your ends. Oh, I've lost one of my ends. I found the end, yay. So it allows me to tie it in a little knot over here, look. And this is gonna help because it's got the two grades, I don't know if you can see this, James has got two grades of mesh, a fine mesh and a coarse mesh, and this is gonna help filter out all the black currants and let everything else through. So very carefully, I'm going to start pouring. Now, Ooh, sorry James. There we go, get all that in. Now there was a head of carbon dioxide in the bucket and that head's been transferred into there. And as we've poured it, the carbon dioxide that was dissolved in the wine is all fizzed out as well. And that is going to help um, keep it safe from infection. So now I've got it in there, I can undo that. Whoop, lost some of it. And lift it up, I'm just gonna strain it out. So the easiest way I find this is by going underneath and squeezing, just gentle squeeze. Now at the same time, as you let out, a gentle squeeze on the top. And this is gonna squeeze all that lovely juice out of the broken down black currants. And it takes a little while, and then you'll end up with quite, you'll know when it's, because it starts to get quite firm and holding its shape into kind of clumps. 
you can keep going for a little bit longer until you've got all that lovely juice out. I can keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. I think that's about the maximum we're going to get out. So that's, now it goes away. And I am going to wash my hands. I've taken a sample in my trial jar with my hydrometer to check the specific gravity to make sure it's at the right level before we move on. And unfortunately, for me, it's not quite at the right level. We've still got a little bit too much sugar in there. Um, and so I'm now going to put the lid back on put it back in my warm cupboard and leave it for a few more days to finish fermenting. The black currant wine took a few more days to slow down and finish fermenting. So I've taken a sample in my trial jar and popped the hydrometer in and it's coming out at 0.998. So beautiful. The next thing we need to do is there's loads of yeast and everything like that still in here. So we need to get rid of those yeast um, and kill them off. And the way we're going to be doing that is by using the fermentation stopper. Now let's have a look and see what I've got here. So I've got about two gallons here and the fermentation stopper you need half a teaspoon of fermentation stopper per gallon. So I'm going to use a whole teaspoon and I've kept, oh, I'm going to get rid of that little tape, I've also kept my sample and that's going to go in with the wine. And that's going to allow us to simply dissolve the fermentation stopper really easily. Lovely. And then that is going to go into the wine. And I'm going to find my spoon. It's just one of those days today, isn't it? And get a good stirring. Now this is going to help kill any remaining yeast. It's also going to protect it from infection from anything in the future. But something else that helps the fermentation get going and also helps prevent oxidization of our wine, so we keep that lovely fantastic colour, are Camden tablets. So again, I've got two gallons, so I'm going to need two crushed Camden tablets. Normally you would use one per gallon. And in that goes as well, like so. And we're going to give that a good stirring. Okay. Let's move all of this out of the way. So, also in here, right now, is a lot of dissolved carbon dioxide. As the yeast were eating all of those sugars, a lot of the carbon dioxide was released. Um, and you saw that coming up as bubbles, but some of it actually got dissolved into the wine. So what we need to do is we need to knock out any of that dissolved carbon dioxide so that we can uh, clear the wine, which we'll be doing in a few days time. So what you need to do is you need to get really deep down in with your spoon and you really need to get a good stirring going on. You need to do this for about a minute and it helps knock any carbon dioxide out of there. It also helps distribute the um, fermentation stopper as well. You need to do this for a minute, three times a day for the next two days. I've been stirring the black currant wine now for the last two days to knock out um, any carbon dioxide and get the potassium sorbates uh, working. But I do remember that we had quite a lot of sediment at the bottom and I thought it was the black currants because I forgot we'd already taken it off. So I've given it an extra day and that's allowed all the uh, sediment that was in there to reaccumulate at the bottom. And so now down here, I've got my second bucket and I've got my simple siphon. So here my simple siphon goes. Good suck. I'm going to get it flowing to get it off of this sediment down at the bottom here. I finished siphoning the wine into our second bucket and I took a cheeky little sample and you can see it's lovely and clear. And it tastes good. A little bit sharp at the moment so it's going to need a little bit of time in the bottle 
Oh my goodness, that really makes the mouth water. It's great. I can also tell you that there's not perfectly clear, so there's still some sediment left in here. And if we remove that sediment, that's really going to help improve the wine. So I'm going to be using uh, a Finings called Clear It. And in this box are two bottles. We've got a bottle A and a bottle B. And these are going to work by grabbing hold of any sediment that's in there, causing it to clump together, um, and then basically drop to the bottom of the bucket. And A is um, key cell sol, and B is gelatin. Now, gelatin, okay, crustaceans, animals, if you don't want to use those, then there are um, vegan-friendly findings out there now made from fungi. So, from the visual inspection, I can see that there's not a huge amount of sediment in here. So, I'm only going to use a couple of mil in this whole two-gallon batch, because it might not sound like it's very, very much. But remember, all we're doing here is using this to attract the particles that are in the wine. And it's really simple. In that two mil goes, and I need to find my long spoon, and we need to give it a stir in. Okay. Now we need to leave bottle A to do its magic and work for an hour. It's been an hour since I added Finings A, so now it's time to add Finings B. And again, it's going to be the same amount of A that is B, so that was 2 mil of A, so therefore it's 2 mil of B. It's slightly different colour, it's almost a little yellowy liquid. And this goes in as well. Easy as that. And then we give it a good stir to mix it all in. Okay, simple as that. So now the lid goes on, and we need to leave it somewhere where it's not going to be disturbed now for the next 48 hours, so that those findings, A and B, can grab hold of all the little sediment particles that are floating around in the wine, and cause them to drop to the bottom of the bucket. The black currant wine has been sat here now for the last 72 hours. And I can tell you, it's cleared nicely and I can see a very thin little film of sediment down the bottom. So the findings have done its work. So it's time to siphon it off. And back to me, James, because down here I've got a, another bucket. And in my bucket, which I've sterilised, I've got a siphon, which I've sterilised. And then this end of the siphon here has got a sediment trap on. That does come off, but you're using it at the moment. And that's going to go into the top of my wine. Uh, going to give it a good suck. Going to get it flowing into the bottom bucket. And then in here, come on in James, come on have a look at this. Because I don't know if you can just about see the end of the siphon, the sediment trap, is just below the surface of the wine. And as the wine gradually drops down, we're going to lower our... Um, siphon down with it and then when we get closer to the bottom we'll do a little trick so that we manage to catch all the wine and as little sediment as possible. So a second pair of hands really helps because I've asked James just to put a couple of egg cups under there so I can support that end of the bucket which means I can tilt it and get it nice and stable. Come on in James and have a quick look at this. Because you'll see down at the bottom there is some sediment and it is now slightly draining down towards the sediment trap. So we'll stop it in a few seconds when it gets a bit too close for comfort. Almost there, almost there. All right, well the sediment trap's decided to do it for us, so that's great. Okay, so we've lost hardly anything there. Excellent, and down in here, in this bucket, we have got lots and lots and lots and lots of lovely clear wine. Right, so this we no longer need, so I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to clean my siphon out. So I've cleaned out my siphon, and I've also set 
Now you've got a little tap which goes in the end of my simple siphon. So this is so we can control the flow because now it's time to fill some bottles. So here I'm just using some greeny, they are green, honest, uh, green bottles. Um, and easiest thing to do with this is take our top off. Now we don't need this end anymore because um, we've taken all the sediment away from the bottom of the bucket so we can go right down to the bottom not worrying about there being any sediment. And over here I've got a bucket clip which makes life a little bit easier because it, in it goes, it will now hold that end of the siphon down in the bucket quite comfortably and I don't have to worry about it. But over at this end I'm going to prime my pipe by giving a good suck Yeah, almost there, and turn it off the tap. And here I've sterilized all my bottles, and so I'm gonna turn on the tap, and then gently run the wine down the inside of the bottle, so it doesn't splash. And this will help prevent uh, the wine picking up any um, infection or anything like that. And it just goes all the way down. And we're gonna keep filling it up till it reaches about here bottom of my finger not the top off um, and it goes pretty quickly it will catch up or you know, catch you out if you don't keep your eye on it especially in these really dark bottles and I think we're about there so that's the first bottle done I've got a few more to go so I've finished bottling the wine and so they're now ready to receive their cork. So over here I've got my three handle corker, I've got a set of tongs and I've got a slightly damp tea towel. That's to help stop the bottles moving. And over here in a saucepan I've got my corks. Why have I got my corks in a saucepan? Well that's because I put a small amount of sodium metabisulfate solution into the saucepan, brought it up to the boil, dropped my corks in put the lid on and left them for a minute to steam. And that's gonna mean that corks are um, sterile, ready to go. But also, it's gonna soften the corks slightly. And this means they're gonna go, they are going to go into the bottles a lot, lot easier. Okay, so that's one. A few more to go. And that's it, 15 bottles of wine corked and ready to be made to look pretty by popping on a nice label on the black currant wine theme, whatever you may put on there. I'm also going to take some pretty little things, these are called shrink caps, I'm going to drop them over and seal them. If you want to know how to do that, that's on one of our other videos. So then once I've done that, these are going to stay stood up for 24 hours. That allows the corks to set in place. And then once the corks have set in place, we can then lie them down and store them somewhere nice and cool so that the acids, the uh, compounds within that wine can all start combining together and start really enhancing and bottle conditioning that wine um, and really making it extra flavoursome. So, from initial tastings, I reckon I want to lay these down for about three to six months um, and then pop one open. Um, I think it's quite nice, uh, the black currant wines either having chilled on a hot summer's day, they also work really, really well having warm on well, room temperature just below uh, on a cold winter's evening. So it's as simple as that. If you've made the black currant wine from our recipe and the recipe is down below, feel free to comment, let us know how yours has turned out. Uh, let us know if you made any tweaks or amendments to the to the method or even to the recipe itself. And how did yours turn out? So that's it. It's an easy peasy way of making wine from black currants in two weeks. That then just needs to be set down, led down even, and uh, left for a few months to bottle condition. And it's as easy as that. So thank you very much, guys. Glad you enjoyed the video and. Um, There'll be another one coming soon. Cheers.